All right, welcome to the uh, 5.3 lesson on inequalities. Uh, before, we've already solved equations and graphed the solutions on a number line in the last two sections. Now we want to go on and be able to extend that and write inequalities and also graph those inequalities on a number line as well. <laughs> so just some um, new vocabulary we want to go over. Um, and inequality is any sentence mathematically that contains greater than, less than, not equal to, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So our first example here, um, write an inequality for the following sentence. Your height is greater than 52 inches. So as you can see, um, if we call H your height that's labeled in red here we call green the greater than symbol um, and 52 inches those are kind of the three parts uh, that we want to look at we want to look at the two things we're comparing we're comparing your height and we're comparing that to 52 inches and we're saying it's greater than 52 inches so we would write h for your height is greater than 52 so that's your answer. You would write h greater than 52. For this one, now we're comparing. Um, it says write an inequality for the following sentence. Your speed is less than or equal to 62. So in this case, we're comparing your speed, which we can call s, and 62. And we're saying it's less than or equal to. So we would write that as follows. We would write um, speed is less than or equal to 62. And that's how I would write that. So go ahead, pause the video if you need to. I jot down an answer and figure out um, how you would write an inequality for this sentence. And I'll try this one. So let's just go ahead and summarize what each of these symbols means. We have the less than symbol. Which could mean is less than, um, another way we can word that is fewer than. Uh, we have the greater than symbol, which you can see that written as is more than or exceeds. For instance, your speed exceeds uh, 55. You can see less than or equal to. Um, that means is no more than, because we're kind of setting a limit with that equal to. Um, or we could say is at most, whatever that number is. And just the opposite for uh, greater than or equal to. We could say is no less than this amount or is at least this amount. So here we have, to meet a certain air quality standard, an automobile must have a fuel efficiency of at least 27.5 miles per gallon. That means 27.5 is our lowest number. We have to be above that. Write an inequality to describe the situation. Well, we could call fuel efficiency efficiency E. We could say E has to be greater than or equal to 27.5 miles per hour. So you see, since it was the least number, we said that efficiency has to be greater than or equal to it. So go ahead and check your understanding uh, with this question. Now we want to talk about determining whether a uh, statement is true or false. We have this statement given. We have s minus 9 is less than 4. And we have to prove that this side is less than this side, or show that it's not. So we have 6 here for s, so we'll plug that in. 6 minus 9 is less than 4. So 6 minus 9 ends up being negative 3 is less than 4. Since that is a true statement, negative 3 is less than 4, we can say that this statement here is true. Now let's look at this one where you have a equals 36. So we're saying 14 is less than or equal to uh, 36 over 3 plus 1. Uh, order of operations tells me I need to divide first. So 36 divided by 3 is 12 plus 1. 14 is less than or equal to 13. This is not true. 
So that statement, uh, 14 is less than or equal to a over 3 plus 1 when a equals 36 is false. Now go ahead and uh, check your progress on this one. That bottom answer is uh, cannot be determined. Uh, state whether the inequality 12 minus m is greater than 7 is true when m equals 5. Now I'll try this one. Is 20 over x plus 3 less than or equal to 6 when x equals 10? Now let's look at um, how we would actually graph these inequalities to show all the values that are possible for x. For instance, if we said x is greater than 2 and we had a number line, uh, before when we graph numbers on number lines, we would just take and find the number it was equal to and put a dot here. Um, but the problem is, in this case, if x is greater than 2, x can never equal 2. x could equal 2.0001, but it can never equal exactly 2. So we are going to, 2 is important here. We're going to put an open circle around 2 to, to show us that up to, or down to 2, everything's possible, but not actually at 2. And we're just going to shade everything above 2. All these values above 2 are possible uh, values for x. And that's a graph, uh, x greater than 2 on the number. So let's talk about one where x can be equal to 3. <clears throat> I'll draw my number line here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3. Now I'm just going to shade it in as, no as I normally would since x can be equal to 3. And x can also be less than 3, so I'm going to go ahead and shade everything to the left. And I usually like to fill in my arrows to show that it goes beyond what I've graphed on the number line. Down to uh, negative infinity are possible for x. So now see if you can determine which of these is the appropriate graph for x is less than 3. And now I'll graph x is greater than 3. So let's now go backwards. Let's look at a graph and interpret what the inequality is from that. Here we can see that x is always greater, or I'm sorry, less than 1. It's always below 1. So we're going to write x is less than 1. Is it equal to? No, because if it were equal, this would be shaded. So looking at this graph, we see that negative 2 is shaded. So we're going to say x is greater than, or it could possibly be equal to, negative 2. So go ahead and see if you can come up with the inequality that this graph represents. And that concludes our first lesson on inequalities. Thanks for watching, and as always, ask me in class if you have any questions.